pirates. I was about to make good my escape when... Cut! Who the hell are you? Uh, I can explain everything. Don't bother. I'm sorry, I didn't realize you were making a movie. So who are you? Stobart, George Stobart. Uh, two B's and two T's. It's okay, Mr. Hawks, he wasn't in the shot. Hawks? This had to be Carlton Hawks, the newest enfant terrible of Tinseltown. I'd read about him. Mailroom boy makes good. Nice to know it was still possible to get to be a director armed with only an encyclopedic knowledge of postal charges. Stay out of the way, surfer boy. I'll deal with you later. Surfer boy? The great director. Well, that's what his pose was supposed to say. He reminded me of Ed Wood. What's the name of the movie? Are you trying to be funny? No. It's Treasure Island, the only book I ever read twice. I don't recall any girls in Treasure Island. Gotta think box office. People like that kind of thing. What other changes have you made to the story? Just a few minor details. You haven't written out Long John Silver. Are you questioning my integrity as an artist? Of course Silver's still in it. We've even hung on to Captain Flint. His parrot. His trained attack falcon. Why do you think blind pew's blind? Did you say you've changed the ending of the story? That's right. Do they find the treasure? Yeah, but that comes later, after they've escaped the volcanic eruption. A volcano? Sure. Krakatoa. All the millions spent on a movie, and nobody thinks to buy an atlas. Who's playing Jim Hawkins? Hi, Q. McEwen. Oh, don't tell me you've never heard of him. I don't go to the movies too often. Jeez. Haiku is only the hottest teen star in Hollywood. That's why we're on such a tight schedule. Gotta film the close-ups before he hits puberty. You know what the locals call this place, don't you? No, but I guess you're gonna tell me. Zombie Island. Zombies? A crazed gleam came into his eye. Get me the writers. Get me makeup. I want zombie pirates in this movie by the end of today. Who's the leading lady? Don't you recognize her? That's Sharon Kowalski. Oh, right. I'd never heard of her. There was nothing else I wanted to ask him. It was a camera mounted on a precarious dolly, or whatever they call him. You wouldn't get me up there. It was the cameraman. Hi, I'm George Stobart. My name's Harris. Most people call me Flash. You're the cameraman, right? That's right. Why'd they call you Flash? You used to be a stills photographer? Nope. I decided not to pursue the subject. There was nothing else I wanted to ask the cameraman. He was a middle-aged man with a pockmarked face. It was a plate of buns. It was a pile of pancakes which were being devoured by the big guy. He couldn't get enough of them. There was a pot of delicious-looking maple syrup on the table. The bun was so stale it felt like a small rock. It was a stale bun which could easily have passed for a rock. It was a plain pancake. It was a pot of maple syrup. Hi, George Stobart. Hello, mate. You're English, right? No, you don't miss much, do you? 
Bert Savage, have you seen what the caterers laid on today? Buns and pancakes. That's awful. It's an improvement on yesterday. The buns are stale, but the pancakes are bloody lovely. How long have you been in the movie business? Flipping years, mate. Absolutely flipping years. I was in the army before that. Thought to myself, you've been risking your bleeding neck every day. Why not cash in on it like? So you became a stuntman, just like that? Nah, of course not. I had to do the training first. What training does a stuntman do? First they told me to stand in the road. Then they run me down. Straight up. Drove at me with a car. I couldn't believe it. I was up on the bonnet and over the other side before I realized he wasn't stopping. Then they threw me downstairs a bit and gives me a certificate. Did you ever work with Carol Climax? The dirty dashend? I'll say. Flipping princess, mate. I heard she was very beautiful. Mind you, she acted like one too. Ordering this, demanding that. Did you ever meet Bertrand de Ubier? Meet him? No. I saw him a few times, though. He didn't like his wife being in films. Do you think Goubier murdered his wife? I wouldn't be surprised if he did. Mind you, there were plenty of people who could have done her in. I thought the public loved her. Yeah, but people who knew her saw the other side. Would you like a bun? No way. The last one I tried cracked my dentures. Do you want to try some syrup with your pancakes? No thanks, mate. I've got to watch my waistline. Would you like a pancake, Bert? No thanks, mate. I've plenty here. Would you like a pancake, Bert? No thanks, mate. I've plenty here. Have you ever seen anything like this before? What's that, mate? Stone axe? No, it's just a piece of polished stone. Very nice. Very nice indeed. Shine it up a bit. You get a few bob for that. It was the famous movie star, Sharon somebody or other. It was teen idol Haiku McEwen in his first starring role. It was a plank balanced precariously on a barrel. Hey there, I'm George Stobart. Well, hi, handsome. You're cute. I wish it was you playing the lead male instead of that kid. I can't act, ma'am. So what? I bet you can kiss. I couldn't believe I was having this conversation with a real movie star. What's it like sharing the spotlight with an actor who's young enough to be your son? What do you mean? What do you think of Hawk's treatment of Treasure Island? It's okay, I guess. I never saw the original. It's a book. One of my favorites. Really? The novelization's out already? What part are you playing? Pirate Babs, the ruthless and passionate Lady Buccaneer. It's a great part. I get to kiss a lot, and I kick ass. Like the boots? Would you like this bun? All right. Oh, wait a minute. Hawks is watching me. Don't let him see it. Oh, he's looking right at me. What's the matter? Never mind. Just put that cake away and pretend you weren't talking to me. What do you think of these? Ew, they're awful. You have no idea how much you've just gone up in my estimation. Take a look at this ancient Mayan artifact. That's just a hunk of stone with a picture scratched on it. In a way, I guess. You don't happen to have seen anything similar, have you? No. I found this reed in the swamp on the other side of the island. Oh, yeah? Yeah, and I used it to shoot a poison dart at a wild boar. It was a real-life drama, not just a scene from a movie. Right. She was having trouble with the whole real-life-is-not-a-movie concept. Hi there, George Stobart. Uh-huh, yeah. Haiku McEwen. You're playing Jim Hawkins, right? Jimbo. I had Mr. Hawks change his name. Jimbo Hawkins, right. Would you like a bun? No way, man. I have to be careful what I eat. Yeah, never eat anything smarter than yourself. I may not be making millions of dollars, and I may not have thousands of nubile, if uncritical, young women lusting for my body, but 
I've got something that you haven't. This small piece of coal. Man, you're getting freaky on me. Is your name really Haiku? Yeah. It was my mom's idea, okay? When I was born, I was so small and perfectly formed, I reminded her of a Japanese poem. Well, I guess it could have been worse. She could have called you Limerick. That's my middle name. Did you always want to be an actor? I don't think of what I do as acting, man. You're not alone. It's more like I'm the voice of my generation. What I'm saying, I'm saying for the kids on the street. Which is what? I'm crap, I'm going nowhere? Huh? What are you saying, man? Stobart, get out of shot. Positions, everybody. I'll get a flip chart and explain it to you later, Haiku. Haiku, baby, are you ready? Okay, man. Uh, which scene is this? You've been captured by Silver's accomplice, Pirate Babs, who's fallen in love with you. That whirring sound you can hear? It's Robert Louis Stevenson spinning in his grave. Okay, people. Top of page 76, Sharon. What about my big speech? It's been cut. Everybody ready? Up to speed. Quiet on the set. Okay, let's make magic. Oh, please. And... action! Why don't you forget that dumb old squire and his bunch of merry men? Can't you see we were made for each other? I know, but Squire Trelawney saved my life, Captain Babs. Why, if it hadn't have been for him, that giant octopus would have made mincemeat out of me. But right now he thinks you're a traitor. He's locked you out of the stockade, Jimbo. That 20-foot high wall with spikes might have kept out Silver's man, but it ain't gonna stop me. Oh, Jimbo. And cut! Good heavy breathing, Sharon. Natch, I'm a pro. Did you get the heavy breathing, Flash? Did I ever, boss? You should have made this movie in 3D. Haiku, you were great. We're setting up for the stunt now, so get a bite to eat. Savage, on set, damn it! It was a plank. I wasn't going to upset Hawks anymore by tampering with his props. The stockade was surrounded by a dry moat filled with sharp wooden stakes. No way was I going to try and jump it. Those stakes looked real. The drawbridge was up. I couldn't see any way of lowering the drawbridge. Or any reason for wanting to. I'd seen a lot of strange things on this island, but here was a bush that was buzzing. As I walked towards the bush, it started buzzing angrily. There was a hornet's nest somewhere in that bush. It was teen idol, haiku... Hey, Haiku! Yeah, man. There was nothing else I wanted to ask him.
It was a pancake covered in maple syrup. I don't want to worry you, but there's a hornet's nest over in that bush. Hornets. That reminds me of a film I was in. The Black Hornet. Would you like a pancake, Bert? Don't mind if I do. The pancake oozed maple syrup all over Bert's chins. Ugh, you put bloody syrup on that pancake. Now it's messed me all up. The Black Hornet? I don't remember seeing that one. Before your time, most likely. What happens in it? Lummy, what don't happen in it? I was shot, stabbed, fed to piranhas, dangled from an airship, and trampled by a zebra. No, I mean, what was the plot? Plot? I had nothing else to ask him just then. Mr. Hawks, I was wondering if... Not now. I got a movie to make. Time for the stunt, Savage. It's a short run, bounce on the plank, and somersault over the spikes and stockade wall. Do what? Plank, spikes, wall, over. Easy, a child could do it. At my age? You must be joking. I could replace you, Savage. Yeah, with an arthritic baboon. Replace me? Lummy, this could be the last stunt I ever perform. I need to think about this. Get myself in the right frame of mind. A suicidal one would fit the bill for that stunt. Fine. You do that. In the meantime, we'll break for lunch. Oh, great. I'm famished. Stay right there and meditate, Savage. Tight ass little git. Hey, Haiku. Yeah, man. There was nothing else I wanted to ask him. What do you think of Haiku McEwen? What's the think? The kid will have earned more by the time his balls drop than I'll earn in a lifetime. Good luck to him. I was talking to Mr. Savage, the stuntman. Is he all right? What makes you say that? He's not making any sense. The guy's English. Hey, Haiku. Yeah, man. You got something to show me? I'd like your opinion on something. Yeah? What? Do you like a pancake? Look at that thing, man. It's dripping with syrup. You'll have every bug in ten miles on your case if you get that stuff on you. I guess you're right. Hey, Haiku. Yeah, man. You got something to show me? I'd like your opinion on something. Yeah? What? He was too interested in himself. Hi. Hi, gorgeous. Would you like a bite of this pancake? Hell no. I only have to look at those things and my thighs swell like balloons. An interesting concept. The next scene is down on the beach. This is where Hawkins finds the treasure in the cave of the crabs. Would those be giant killer crabs by any chance? Giant mutant killer crabs with attitude. There it was. The rock I'd seen from the camel's hump. 
Now that I was close up, I could make out a small cave near the top of the pillar. Who, oh, me? I want you to stay right where I can keep an eye on you. I'm not one of your lackeys, Hawks. I go where I like. Not here you don't. The movie company has rented this island for the duration. You're trespassing. Do as you're told or you're gone. It was Carlton Hawks, the megalomaniac director. It was the cameraman. He didn't look happy. There was nothing else I wanted to ask the cameraman. The little tent was like a canvas outhouse. Hey, surfer boy, stay out of there. Oh, what is it this time? That's the wardrobe tent. You've got no business to be going in there. Looked like I wasn't going to get to play dress-up. You don't look happy. Why should I be happy? Look at that cave. It's supposed to be where the treasure is. So? Look at it! It's crap! Does that look like the sort of place anybody would hide treasure? I should have had props build me a proper damn cave. A cinematic cave. What do you mean, a cinematic cave? One with drama. Danger. One that looks like the mouth of a big stone skull would be cool. But I'd settle for drama and danger. Why don't you use that cave up on the rock pillar at the end of the beach? We don't have a stuntman anymore. Hey, I'll do the stunt. I appreciate the offer, but if you fall, you'll sue us. No, I won't. Everybody hear that? I heard it. Good enough, we're covered. Got any experience? Death-defying leaps, desperate fist fights, getting caught in explosions, you name it. Okay, people, move out. We're shooting the scene at the end of the beach. No, we're not. The camera's still bogged down. Shoot, I forgot about that. No go, Stobart. We'll have to use this cave after all. It was a portable movie camera. Poor old Bert looked in a bad way. Wasn't a surprise, considering what I'd put him through at the stockade. It was Haiku McEwen, marketing's answer to talent. There it was, the column of rock I'd seen from the camel's hump. It was a lot taller than I'd expected. Get out of shot. Hey, Haiku. Yeah, man. There was nothing else I wanted. Hi, Bert. Don't you eye me. Fine friend you turned out to be. What's the problem? Huh. <laughs> What's it like to work with Carlton Hawk? Flipping misery, mate. Look, Bert, what's wrong? You got a bloody nerve. If I didn't know better, I'd have thought you gave me that pancake just so them ornits would go for me. Oh, Bert. You've wounded me. How can you think that? Well, by looking at the evidence. I don't know why you still want to be a stunt man anyway. Well, this is all I know, isn't it? If I don't do this, what do I do? Well, how about being a stunt coordinator? Being a what? You stand around in a big jacket and a baseball cap, telling the stunt people what to do. I can do that. Hey, you've done the job for years and you're not dead. That's got to be good for morale. Well, I don't know. You get your own megaphone. I'll do it. George Stobart, international adventurer and roaming careers advisor. What films have you worked on in the past? Remember Death Stalker of the 10th grade? The psychotic biker what crashed into the school bus? That was me. Well, what about They Prayed to Satan? 
I was the bloke in the hospital scene. You know, the one who caught fire, fell through the flipping skylight. I don't think I caught those. Must be cool getting to travel the world like this. Yeah, nice here, isn't it? My barrel used to love the seaside. Day out of Clacton. Bloody smashing. A pint of jelly deals washed down with a bottle of brown. Quick feel on a big wheel and a stroll around the town. Course them days, you could live like a flipping king on ten bob a night. Tombola, frothy coffee at the cap of the prom. You know, I don't have the faintest idea what you're talking about. I've had a great idea. How about you dress up as Jim Hawkins and climb up to that cave over there? What cave? That cave? You must think I'm balmy. I did me back in being chased by them ornits over that flaming stockade wall. No way am I going up there. Well, that narrowed the field. Flash? Yep. We can't film at the Needle Rock because the camera's bogged down, right? You got it, champ. So, why can't we use the portable camera instead? You know, that's a pretty smart idea. I've been talking to the cameraman. He's got a portable camera. So? So, you can use the cave in that rock pillar at the end of the beach. That's a dramatic cave if ever I saw one. We ain't got a stabilized harness for it. The camera will wobble. Did D.W. Griffiths have a stabilized harness when he made Birth of a Nation? You're right, damn it. Hitchcock, Wells, none of them needed one. For crying out loud, Sam Rainey stabilized his camera on a plank. Props, get me a plank. We're gonna wing it. Hot dog. We're gonna do a cinema verite pirate movie. George, get to wardrobe. We're gonna make you a star. On my way. Ready when you are, Mr. Hawks. The stone which Ketch had captured from the Spanish. The Eagle Stone! <laughs> 